So in this video, I wanted to spend a little time talking about Vercel and logging. Recently, I wanted to have some good logging happening in a Next.js slash React application. And so I went looking around on the internet and found this marketplace here, integrations, and the URL is https vercel.com slash integrations. And so if you scroll down the page here for a little ways, you can see there's logging. And so then I learned about Axiom and I thought it looked really good. So I'm going to show some of the features of it and how I implemented it. And so if you click on the Axiom, it'll take you to another page like this. And it shows how you have this one dashboard to rule them all. And you can do queries and look at data grids and just various different ways to look at your information. It's really helpful. So here we're talking about the overview and Axiom's Vercel integration enables you to monitor the health and performance of your Vercel deployments by ingesting all your request, function, and web vitals data. And if you scroll down here, you can see how you do a npm install next-axiom. And of course you can go look that up in the npm packages website if you need to and see the environment variable that will show up in your Vercel environment. And I'll show this code here implemented inside my website that I'm building. And so you can say add integration. And so what it looks like once you implement this code, this is basically in my app.js underscore app.js file. And I've already done the npm install. And this is actually in a chat GPT bot program that I'm working on. And so I wanted to have this logging functionality. So once I did the npm install for next axiom, then I did this export here on this report web vitals from next axiom. And also I had to create a next.config.js and I don't really have anything else in here right now except except this constant with axiom equals require and then next dash axiom and then do the export and then as I mentioned in the app.js file you do the export here and then we're going to go to the index.js file and so here we're in the index.js file and you can see how I imported log from next-axiom. And once you've done that, then you can come down to wherever you need to do this logging, whatever kind of logging you want to do. And like, I just basically to test it in my use effect, I said, hey, log.debug, get questions. We're in the get questions method here. Go ahead and log out in this case. I just hard coded a user ID 42 so I could see the data show up in the dashboard. So that's basically how to implement it inside of a Next.js slash React application. So again, they have the instructions here. And if we take a quick look at their web page, Axiom, that's A xiom.co slash for sell. You can read about the features and functionality. And I do need to point out the pricing, which is really a great deal here. The hobby plan is pers or perfect for personal projects. It can ingest 0.5 terabytes per month included for free. And it retains your data or logs for 30 days. You can stream, analyze, chart, monitor your data, send data from unlimited sources, connect integrations, log forwarders, and more. Advanced querying with APL, that's like their query language. 
You get three monitors for like alerting with email and Discord notifiers and community support for zero dollars. And you can see some of the other developers and or companies using the software. And I'll show how I have it implemented in my project here in just a moment. So it's really, I think, awesome that they give so much away for free. And so here I'm inside of my Vercel project. And you can see it's just giving an overview of the integration that's inside of the Vercel deployment. And so I have two applications inside of this Vercel. It's just a test account. And I did upgrade it to the pro trial because in working with the chat G chat GPT or open AI API, it times out after 10 seconds, which I will be talking about that in a separate video. So I upgraded to try it out in the pro plan in Vercel. And so the timeout is 60 seconds. They explain all that in their documentation and I have tested it thoroughly and I do see I get at least 60 seconds to run requests like longer requests to chat GPT or the open API to make requests to it. So the pro plan is good for allowing your queries to run longer. Sometimes 60 seconds isn't enough, depending on how much in information you're asking for the open API. And so this is one of the applications that I have running here. It's just a basic Next.js. And if I hit refresh, I'll do that a couple times. And so now I'm going to go to the dashboard, which is what all this is about. And here on the left, you can see the Axiom dashboard. And then you have data sets, the stream, the data explorer, alerts. If you want to set up alerts for different thresholds and things, you can do that. Again, all this is free. And so now we see we have 2211 total requests. So let's go back here and just I'll hit refresh once, hit it twice. So now it's gone up to 2217 based on what it was doing behind the scenes. And so you can see total successful requests, bad requests. Some of those were because the open API web API was down or I had things not configured correctly. And sometimes I intentionally tried to break it. And so then we see we have 27 aired requests and you can see so much, I think really great information here on this dashboard. You can see function requests, the function cache performance, routes with errors. These are a lot of the types of errors I've been seeing. 504s and 429s, like if you don't have enough tokens. I found out that if you sign up for an account with, with the same phone number on OpenAPI or the OpenAI website, that you'll basically get like zero dollars in tokens. So I had to use a separate mobile phone number to request access to a new account with new credits. You get $18 in credit, which is actually a lot. You can run a lot of questions and, an and get answers back for that. So, and it looks like it maybe aired out a few times. I also forced some errors. In some cases, I was just testing it out so I could see information show up here. Then you have your top air logs. Like right here, 429, you exceeded your current quota. Please check your plan and billing details. That's an error from the open AI web API because that account, the one that's linked into this system here, had zero dollars. So it was actually right that I exceeded my quota, which was zero, so I had no quota in my other account that I mentioned in some of my other open AI videos 
it has the $18. So once I realized that, I applied for another account, like I said, and now it's fine and I can run these queries from my new application against that. And some other nice stuff here is the first contentful paint and the largest contentful paint and first input delay. And you can see like how many data points, visitor countries and things like that. So I think this is, you know, a really great way to gather a bunch of information all in one place. And if you want to sort by project, you can do that. And here is a kind of a status. And once you install it onto your Vercel account, then you'll see these first three are active, installed and installed. And then it will tell you here, if you haven't installed the client side code, like I showed, then this will say, you know, there's a link that says, hey, go ahead and install this. But since I've done that now and I'm getting the Web Vitals information from the client side, now it says that it's installed. And if you want to learn more, you can click on this and it goes and explains. This is on the Axiom.co website. Connect Axiom with Vercel to get the deepest observability experience for your Vercel projects. Easily monitor data from requests, functions, web vitals in one place. 100% live and 100% of data, no sampling. And of course, as you saw, the Axiom Vercel integration ships with a pre-built dashboard and pre-installed monitor so you can be in complete control of your projects with minimal effort. And goes on to explain Vercel is a platform for front-end frameworks and static sites built to integrate with your headless content, commerce, and, or database. And I really like Vercel. I'm using it for more projects and for more functions that it offers. So that's what that page takes you to. And I'll briefly review some of these other options here. You can set the time frame quickly across this platform by choosing the number of days or a custom start date. And if you want it to refresh, you can tell it how often you, you want it to refresh and then it sticks. Like I've had this on two days for a little while and it remembers it. You can also fork the dashboard if you wanted to or make it go full screen. So data sets, right now I just have this one data set and it tells you how much storage you've used, how many data sets, and how many events that you have. So if I click on Vercel, there's so many different like features available for filtering here and visualizing your data. I'm not gonna go into all the details in this video. I wanted to do an overview, but you can see I've had 2.88 thousand events and that's like 24 hours in setting up this test project for this video. And so then you can come over here and choose different time ranges for your query that you're going to run. And if you want to select a source of the information that you want to see, you can say all or just your build output, your functions that are running, function logs, edge stuff, edge logs or front end logs, static assets or web vitals. So it really gives you a lot of different ways to slice your data and look at that section of it. And since I have these two projects in here, you, you could choose your different projects or leave it on all like I have selected. But if you needed to focus in on one project, you could do that just by choosing that drop down. And so there's other ways to select aggregations, to filter your data, to group by different data, to order it. And here's all these different fields that it's set up. So I'm just going to click run query. And so you can see that it shows you this data grid here. And from this screen, you can like click on one of these and it gives you more details or you can look at the raw data if you need to parse that or look at it differently. So it's really great. It's easy just to click through and see what's in your log files. There are some things I won't show for privacy reasons like the stream it shows more specific information, but that's a really useful tool also. 
I can show the dashboard screen here. If you have multiple data sets, you can click on it and then it'll take you inside of that or you can add other ones if you wanna add another data set. So here is the data explorer, which is really cool, really useful. Again, you can set your quick range or a custom date range. And these are like queries that have been saved from things that I've run before. Again, for privacy reasons, I'm not going to click on some of these, but you can create your own queries. You can see the query syntax here and get very detailed and what you want to find. And on the dashboard screen, of course, this is my Vercel dashboard that we looked at, or you could create private ones. Only you can see and change these dashboards or here, like you can create new dashboards to easily view related queries across data sets. So create them the way that you might like. Then we have the alerts, monitors, run queries in the background and trigger when a threshold is met. So you can click create, give it a name, give it a description, and then set your options for your trigger when they're like equal to a certain value and how often you want to monitor it. And then down here, like you can see, Axiom supports building queries visually or by using their query language. So you can get into advanced stuff or use the simple query builder and then click create down in the bottom right there. So that's really handy stuff there too. But since I want to keep this a shorter video, I won't be going into some of those details in this video. So then we come into the profile page, which shows various different settings, API tokens, billing, if you're paying for it, data sets, endpoints, simplify sending data to Axiom, integrations, configure and manage your integrations, your profile and personal tokens, your license status, since I have a free plan, I don't need that. And if you are gonna get into the paid version, you can manage teams and access. So that's a really high level overview of a very awesome tool. So if you haven't used Vercel before, maybe you can try and deploy a, a quick application, get an account on Vercel and they have some links you can click on basically to deploy an application. If you have a GitHub account, you can link it into there. And then basically you click a few buttons to uh, do this platform integration of Axiom and Vercel. And then the code that I showed earlier in the video to put the web vitals into your client side code. So there's really not too many steps and then you can be up and running and have a really great experience here with this very helpful information as you're building and troubleshooting your applications. So I hope you find this useful and I will plan to make some more videos a little bit more in depth about this in the future. There were two other pages I wanted to mention as I have been testing my OpenAI web application. I keep an eye and kind of correlate that information with what I see here in the usage dashboard of the openai.com website. So you can, like if you're keeping track like I am of the prompts that I'm sending and receiving and how many tokens I'm storing that information in my own database, you can kind of verify that the information is coming through here. And then there's another page, if you're not aware, I actually put links to these the dashboard and this OpenAI status page and I subscribe to it for updates in case it's been broken because I was seeing some of these 429s and it was affecting the text DaVinci 003 model which is the one that I was working with and so you do see from time to time they may have some incidents reported here so it's it's good to keep track of this and I have links to this type of information right in my application like in the footer to make it easy to get to in case while I'm testing there's something going on I can just literally click a link in the footer and come right over and see if something's going on here so in case you weren't aware of those pages I thought I would mention them again thanks for watching the video and I'll talk to you soon
If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.